Mike Adams, the health ranger, filling in for Alex today. We've been talking about Fukushima radiation catastrophe and how it's spreading radiation across the world now with a core number, or I'm sorry, a reactor number three core containment vessel break that is causing a leak there. We've been talking about GMOs and the events taking place tomorrow around the country to protest the non-labeling of GMOs in our food supply. People are demanding across the political spectrum on the left, the right, everybody in between, everybody wants to know what's in their food. We also have talked about health freedom a little bit. And joining us shortly, we're going to have Kentucky gubernatorial candidate Phil Moffitt, who is going to be joining us and talking about his amazing platform that says keep the FDA off of our farms in Kentucky, get the federal government out of our lives so that our farmers can pursue their own economic abundance without having their hands tied behind their backs or without being carted off as criminals for growing things such as industrial hemp, which we import from other countries anyway to make clothing and bags and food. So why not let Kentucky farmers grow it? Uh, industrial hemp, you can't smoke it. It's not that drug. It's industrial hemp only, and it's good for making clothing and fibers. Hey, the Constitution is written on hemp. So that's what we're talking about, bringing that back to America. So Phil Moffat's going to be joining us. Uh, Phil, are, are you there right now? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you, Mr. Moffat, for joining us today. Now, f for those who aren't familiar with your platform and what you're saying here, can you give us a brief summary of, of what you're running on here with the FDA and keeping the FDA off of the farms of the Kentucky farmers? Well, one of the corners of our platform is, is fighting for state sovereignty under the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. And part of that is using the power of nullification to get the federal government uh, out of our coal fields in Kentucky and, and off of our and the FDA off of our farms. And uh, it also applies to, to trying to get any unconstitutional regulation or law that comes from uh, the federal government uh, off of you know off our territory in Kentucky. We're we're able and free people and we need to be treated as such by the US government. Well, let me ask you what's what's wrong with the FDA on your farms there in Kentucky? Why why are you against that? Well, for a number of reasons. One, it's not a right given to them as, uh, you know, enumerated in the Constitution. So they shouldn't have any any place regulating how we farm or what we farm in Kentucky. And uh, the other is that they're choking our farms uh, to death. They're taking away crops. They're bringing in the, they're trying to force us to use the, the, the seeds from, you know, genetically modified seeds. And they're trying all kinds of techniques, basically, to tell us what to do and when to do it. And that's not how free people live. That's exactly right. Now, where did this come from? I, I, I know you're a Tea Party candidate for, and you're running in the gubernatorial primary, which is coming up very soon. But what caused you to pursue this position? And what kind of feedback are you getting from the people of Kentucky that you're talking to right now about this position? Well, what caused us to do it is our farms, our farmers are, are going broke. Uh, they, slowly but surely, the federal government has taken away crops from them uh, and, and opportunity for them to prosper. And uh, one of the biggest things that they took away from us, and they did this quite some time ago, but it needs to come back now because it has even more relevance today than it did 100 years ago, and that's industrial hemp. These things, uh, industrial hemp is a wonderful product. It grows exceptionally well in Kentucky. It can be used for all types of things, including food, clothing, oils. Uh, lotions, medicines, and it's, uh, it, it was the number one cash crop in Kentucky until uh, the DEA, believe it or not, in the 1930s took it away from uh, took it away from our farmers because they tied it to marijuana, which is an unjust uh, an unjust tying together of two things. Uh, because you can smoke hemp, but you certainly can't get high off of it. Uh, <laughs> you the can, the you response can. has been very good. I'll, I'll tell you, the, uh, there are a lot of people in Kentucky. They want the organic uh, food industry in Kentucky. They want industrial hemp. They want their farmers to just... All right, just Phil, we got to take a break here, Phil. We will be joining you on the other side of this break. Stay with us here on the Alex Jones Show. We'll be returning with Phil Moffat getting the FDA off Kentucky's farms. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm filling in for Alex today. I'm Mike Adams, the editor of Natural News. We are joined right now by Phil Moffat, who is the gubernatorial candidate for Kentucky, and he's running on a unique and very uplifting platform, actually, about getting the feds off of our farms, out of our lives, so that the farmers of Kentucky can experience economic abundance without the interference of Washington. It's about more than farmers, but 
uh, Phil Moffat is joining us again in this segment. Phil, what has been the reaction now so far to your message out on the streets in Kentucky? The, the reaction has been has been wonderful. Uh, a, a lot of people in Kentucky uh, understand how repressive the federal government has become, especially to our farmers. Uh, we had a, a an absolutely wonderful uh, tobacco industry here in Kentucky that was taken away from us through federal regulation and lawsuits, and it, it really has left our farmers in, in such a, a tough spot. They're they're trying to fight now in the soybean and soy and soy markets, which of course are worldwide markets with very low margins. And they, they need more crops and more opportunity uh, to be free people. And, you know, industrial hemp and the whole foods industry and the natural foods industry would be great extensions for them. And it would allow us to bring jobs and prosperity back to Kentucky in a way we haven't seen in a long time. And as you're explaining, the federal government has interfered with the ability of Kentucky farmers to grow crops that would actually make them a profit, such as industrial hemp, which, again, we're importing from other countries and not allowing it to be grown right here in America. I mean, what kind of, how does that policy even come to exist in America where American farmers can't grow the stuff that we're buying from other countries? It doesn't well, make sense. It, it's what you might expect. It was a power grab by, by a rich industrialist in the 1930s. Uh, Andrew Mellon, who was the Bill Gates of the day and the owner of Mellon Bank, was the Secretary of Treasury under... Um, uh, FDR, and he was also one of the seed investors in a company called DuPont Chemical. <laughs> there and you go. DuPont Chemical was starting to, you know, understanding uh, things like plastics and nylons and those types of things. The synthetics industry was being born, and their number one competitor was the industrial hemp industry in the United States. So uh, hemp at the time was, you know, uh, used for clothing and, and fabrics, ropes, and uh, all kinds of different things. And, of course, by taking that off the market, and how they did it was they used that current-day uh, DEA to tie hemp, which is in the cannabis family, uh, that, to tie industrial hemp to marijuana. And, and they made it illegal and, and took it off the, and really, in just a day or so, took an entire market away from Kentucky farmers and other states as well. It's incredible, but just to be clear for those listening, your position is not about medical marijuana. You're not advocating marijuana. You're, you're advocating just that farmers can grow industrial hemp to be used for clothing, to be used for making personal care products, and, and even hemp seeds, which are a nutritional product, those kinds of things, correct? That is absolutely correct. We oh. are not trying to get marijuana legalized in Kentucky. We want industrial hemp re-legalized in Kentucky. There you go. Now, I understand that your, your position is gaining such strength and you have so much momentum moving forward now that you're already starting to be attacked with some rather sleazy types of tactics that, that we see in a lot of political campaigns. This is some of the breaking news. We just got word before we went on the air with you here, Phil, that someone is running uh, counterfeit ads in your name on Facebook to try to discredit you. That's, that's exactly right. It, it, it is amazing. Uh, that they would do this, uh, uh, but the, the truth is there are a lot of p uh, bad people out there. Uh, they're trying to pit us against the New Hampshire's Free State Project, but, and this ad uh, says something to the effect that we don't believe that, they're, uh, that they've done a good job, and they and basically, uh, you know, it, it sheds a bad light on them, and, and that's just not the case. We appreciate what they're doing in New Hampshire and hope for the best. Uh, but, you know, I guess uh, my late father-in-law told me at one time, he's an old Army Air Corps pilot, he said that uh, you know you're over the target when, you're, when you start catching the flak. And uh, that's exactly what's happening to us. We're, we have a good message. We're getting it out there. The people are excited about it. And now they're just trying to destroy me personally. Well, you're right in the crosshairs now. Of course you're going to be hit with a big disinfo campaign. That's, you, can, you can expect a lot more, Phil, as I'm sure you're aware. But if you think about it, you are challenging the authority of the federal government in the state of Kentucky. And they know that if you win and you can, you can protect that power of the state there and you can enforce the Tenth Amendment rights of the state of Kentucky versus the federal government, that you will set a precedent. And that precedent is extremely dangerous to the power that's slipping through the fingers of those at the federal government who don't want the states to be able to make their own decisions about things like food and medicine and farming and economics and so on. Is it? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right, but I like the company that I'm in because Thomas Jefferson in 1798 wrote something called the Kentucky Resolution. And that was a, 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 a resolution he wrote in response to the Aliens and Seditions Act. And basically what it said is that uh, Thomas Jefferson said that if the, if the general government assumes undelegated powers, then nullification is the act that is right, if that is the rightful remedy. 
And uh, that's what we need to do. I don't believe, in, and I've read the Constitution several times, if we don't fight against the federal government, I don't believe there's a statute of limitations that keeps us from starting uh, the fight today or starting the fight tomorrow. They, they've <laughs> taken right. our rights away. We need to get them back in, in on our side of the fence. And, uh, you know, Kentucky's just one of many uh, states that are, I will be as, as Kentucky's governor, one of many governors that are, are looking forward to this fight with the federal government to get them back into the Constitution. Yeah, you're, you're right, Phil. There's no statute of limitations on freedom. And thank goodness for that, too. Now, Phil Moffitt, your website, let me just spell that out for people listening. It's Phil Moffitt, M O F F E T T dot com. So you can check out more information about Phil Moffitt on that website. We are going to continue with Phil here. I have a question for you. Uh, Phil, have you done any calculations, or can you, can you just take a shot at this, about what it would mean to Kentucky's economy if you could get the federal government off your farms, out of your, your industrial hemp farming history, and reestablish freedom for the state of Kentucky in, in the agriculture sense? What would that mean for your people there in the state? Well, I can tell you the University of Kentucky did a study in, in 1990 about the impact that industrial hemp would have in Kentucky if it were re-legalized. And by their numbers, they, are, they, would have, they estimated that as many as 90,000 new jobs would be created in Kentucky as a result of the farming and the processing of, of hemp and the, and, the, and the related products that would come from it. Now, that's a really big number. And, and even if we only got a third of that impact, it would be a home run, and a, a, a really of epic proportions in Kentucky. So it's uh, opening our farmers up to be able to make the common sense decisions that they're capable of making. Uh, you know, will will turn us into uh, one of the best economies in the nation. And I know that scares a lot of people out there because Kentucky's always been a laggard in almost every way. And uh, here we are looking at an opportunity to jump ahead of the rest of the country. And, and actually lead. And well, I can see with time is now. with you at the helm there, Kentucky would become if your policy if your policies were able to to get through and you were able to protect them from the federal government, uh, Kentucky would become the industrial hemp farming capital of the country. I could actually see farmers migrating to Kentucky to buy land that would increase the land values throughout the state. There would be uh, higher tax revenues, higher exports out of Kentucky. This would be an economic gold mine for the state of Kentucky. And frankly, the first state that does this is going to get the most riches from that gold mine, it seems, wouldn't you say? I, I agree with that. And, you know, it also opens up the multi-billion dollar organic and natural food industry as well. I mean, they are looking for a place to, to be able to to grow their crops without having uh, the government crawling all over them every day. And it's, uh, it's something that we need to have in place. It's, you know, it, it seems so common sense to me and, and so fundamental in terms of, uh, of the right of freedom. I, I have a hard time believing so many people don't believe uh, or, I guess, resistant uh, to this type of stuff in terms of getting the federal government off of our farms and out of our coal fields. Well, it's, it's amazing. The American people have been trained, as you well know. They've, they've been hypnotized in many cases to just do what they're told, follow their orders. They're drugged often with so many medications that, that they're beyond critical thinking ability. You know, there's fluoride in the water. The food has been stripped of many of its nutritional values because of the refining and the processing and the bleaching and the homogenization through the processed food industry. And what you're talking about now in Kentucky, growing real food, organic food even, uh, real crops that can be used right here in America, that would help, I think, wake Americans up from the healthy, nutritious soil that Kentucky is blessed with. I mean, you you really have a gold mine there. Well, I agree with you. It's, it's the you know the the situation is that we really have been brainwashed, you know, over the last uh, three or four decades, if not longer, uh, to believe that everything that the federal government does is to protect us, and it and it really is nonsense. Most of the things that they have they have put into place and and insist stay in place have done absolutely nothing positive for us and we need to we need to roll that back and get back to the basics and get back to understanding that you know uh, farmers need economic opportunities and, and we need to promote self-reliance I mean, it's what made this country great and, uh, and it has to we have to go back to that or we're going to convert ourselves into some semi-socialist european nation 
Well, those, those are dangerous words in Washington. Self-reliance. How, how dare you suggest such a thing for Americans? Self-reliance. Hey, people are supposed to depend on the government to tell them what to do, what to eat, what kind of medicine to buy, what kind of vaccines to take, so on and so forth. You know, the idea that people could actually rely on themselves or each other or their local communities, that's the antithesis of what Washington is trying to sell these days.